Hello, everyone. I'm presenting on writing a KVM in Perl, because if you're like me, you have had nothing but stress with KVMs. So why write this KVM script in Perl? Well, because a reasonable quality KVM can be expensive. I've tried some up to $500, but I've seen them up to thousands of dollars. Some monitors, video cards, or even operating systems do not tolerate switching well, even with a really good KVM. EDID emulation can help, but not always. But you might have everything you need to get KVM functionality without any new hardware or possibly with just a $30 uh, investment. So first, does your monitor have DCC and does it have multiple inputs? If it does, then that's half of the battle right there. DCC lets you query your monitor and switch outputs programmatically. In this case, D DDC util uh, set all that garbage will set you to the display port one. All you have to do is query your monitor, find the right values. Um, if your monitor doesn't support DCC, you will have to get a KVM. I don't have a solution for you. So keyboard and mouse support. If you're lucky like me, you might have a Logitech device that has a button that'll let you switch between machines already. This can also be done programmatically with the solar config. Some other brands might have this capability, but not all do. But don't fret. If yours do not have this capability, there is a quick alternative. But first, an example KVM script if you have uh, keyboards and mice that can switch and uh, DDC support. In this case, it's a script that takes a machine name and will just switch you to that machine. I copy this to all my computers and then just have hotkeys to switch between my computers without the use of a physical KVM. It's a very simple script, this is, although this is still stripped down from the 30 line one I actually use. If you do not have keyboard and mouse that can switch, you can buy a USB switch that can switch between two or four computers for around $30. If you have one of these, you can look at the output of uh, LSUSB to see it and get its identifier number here. And you can write a script that will constantly check the output of LSUSB. And if it finds the device, send the DCC signals to the monitor. You put that on both your computers and have it just run in the background. Then all you have to do is switch the USB switch and your monitor will automatically switch for you. This is a very naive script. You probably don't actually want to be calling LSUSB at one second intervals, but this is a Perl conference, not a Linux conference, so <laughs> not going into how to do it properly. Bonus, Thunderbolt docs. These days, Thunderbolt docs are really nice, and so if you don't want to bother with the KVM stuff, just get a Thunderbolt doc and switch the cable, single uh, cable solution, as long as your computer supports it. But Ideally, you don't want to be switching cables every time you switch computers. Um, so just check your hardware. A lot of hardware these days, it can be accessed through programmatic means, like switching inputs on your monitor and switching which computer your mouse and keyboard go to. Um, this is, KVM is just one solution that you can implement because of programmable devices, but there might be other ones that I haven't even seen yet. Um, and since it looks like I'm not out of time yet, I will say that I wrote this because I have had nothing with, but frustration with the uh, ThinkPad laptops that every company for the last 10 years has issued me because every other computer I have from every other brand works fine on any KVM I put it on, but three generations of ThinkPads, whether they were docked, undocked, used the set and dock, or used a Thunderbolt dock, will not work after a KVM switches away from them, even when I invest in a really expensive uh, a KVM that emulates EDID. It was stressful, it was annoying. At one point I had two stations so that my computers that were issued by work had their own set of monitors and mice because I just couldn't get switching to work. Now with this solution, nothing ever actually gets disconnected and I don't have to deal with the problem anymore. That is the end of the talk.